250 kilometres west of Sydney, there's a network of secret caves that rival the renowned Janolan Caves in the Blue Mountains. The Cliefton Caves lie beneath private property which has enabled them to be preserved and protected. But now the state government is investigating building a dam right above the caves, which, the experts say, will flood and erode the cave network and destroy internationally significant fossil sites. Reporter Sharon O'Neill has been given a rare look at the underground treasures that may soon be lost forever. It looks like any other piece of prime grazing land in the central west of New South Wales. But this land holds a secret. I think People are unaware and to a certain extent that has been deliberate because the, the best way to protect the caves is to, for people not to know about them. More than 100 limestone caves lie underneath this land in the Bolubula River Valley, a site the state and federal governments have identified as a possible location for a 90,000 megalitre dam. This site is a magnificent site uh, it can hold 90 to 100,000 megs with a minimum wall size. It's a really great catch. But for those who know what lies beneath this land, the news that the caves could be lost forever is devastating. Unfortunately, it's a double-edged sword that because people don't know about them, they can come up with these proposals. Just keep your weight low. Bruce Howlett is president of the Orange Speleological Society. Today he, along with visiting cavers from Sydney University, have invited 730 New South Wales to see firsthand the Cliefton Caves. If the public know about the significance of these caves, then you know we can have a sensible discussion about why they should be protected and I think that that's, that's the key to it. Otherwise, it's just a, um, becomes a, a discussion about dams or no dams, and it's a much bigger issue than that. The first recorded discovery of limestone deposits on mainland Australia was made here in the Cliefton Caves more than a century ago. The cave was discovered by a man called Christian Rittmeister in the 1870s. This point is almost as far from the original entrance to the cave as he could have got. So how far does this cave go? I mean, how big is it? How far back does it go? There's probably a couple of kilometres of passage in here when we finish mapping it properly. With the prospect of a dam covering this area, there's now an urgency to document the full extent of the Cliefton Caves. On this trip, CSIRO scientist Robert Zlot has volunteered his time to scan the caves using a handheld laser scanner. The idea here is that the laser scanner, which is the device on the top here, scans sort of in a stripe or a, or a single plane. And by having it on the spring, we're actually sweeping that plane around and that turns the view into a 3D field of view. Well, I've been caving in the air for nearly 40 years. There's always something new to be seen and you know, it's just, they're just beautiful places to be. So Tina, tell me about this is really beautiful. It is, it's a special part of the cave. What's up above us are helictites. Okay, so it's uh, calcium carbonate which is coming out of the limestone. So how, how old is this formation here? So up above us, we are looking at a minimum of thousands of years. It could be hundreds oh. of thousands of years. The speleontologists who are studying and preserving this cave system now fear it will be lost forever if the New South Wales government decides to place a dam up above at Needles Gap. The caves themselves will be lost because once they're filled up with water, everything will be covered in silt and the formations will start to erode. You've also going to lose um, a wonderful scientific resource. I am not a cave expert, so you're talking outside my realm. One of the main drivers for the dam is the Federal National Party MP, John Cobb. It is high enough 
to not involve a lot of pumping, to go to uh, the local government areas of Cow, of Orange, of Blaney, of Cabon, of Grenfell, of Parks. It is magnificently situated. Uh, it holds a lot of water. It would give not more irrigation, greater security for irrigation, uh, but more to the point, it would free up other water to allow greater urban development, um, manufacturing, as I said, manufacturing, mining, which is a big user of water, and there are probably three projects in the region which need water. The Needles Gap Dam is one of the most ridiculous water infrastructure projects ever to be considered in New South Wales. This area here underwater. Like John Cobb, Green's MLC Jeremy Buckingham also hails from the Central West. He says the state government's decision to spend millions of dollars on a dam feasibility study is a waste of money. The central west of New South Wales went through the ringer in the last millennium drought. Uh, we had a drought that really impacted on agriculture and regional water supplies. Uh, out of that flowed the Centroc Water Study. That identified all the major water infrastructure projects that we should consider funding. The Needles Gap Dam was not one of those projects. It did not rate a mention. So it's one of the last thing we should be doing. We should be looking at efficiency, uh, recycled water, uh, uh, stormwater harvesting, uh, efficiency in terms of the mining, those types of things. This is the last project we should be considering, not the first, and certainly not throwing millions of dollars at a project that no one wants and no one's even talked about. It had never been talked about until I talked to State Water. They were fantastic. Uh, uh, Central Tablelands Water had had a study done uh, which showed that uh, the possibilities of this were very good, that it could hold uh, 90 to 100,000 megs with uh, a quite minimal uh, amount of, uh, of work being done uh, to, to erect it because it's such a great site. It's deep and it's narrow at the mouth. Uh, so, so no, I, I definitely disagree that there is no work to show uh, how beneficial and how uh, appropriate the site is. How much of your property would be impacted by the proposed dam as you know it? Oh, it's hard to tell, but I would surmise probably between 40 and 60 per cent. It's just hard to get a proper handle on it. Because once again, we really haven't been approached by anyone regarding the dimensions. I don't know, Rosie, it's, um... Anthony Dunhill is a third generation well. farmer, and his property is one of two that will bear the main impact of any dam at Needles Gap. I'm not anti dams at all. I, I really think with, with changing climate, in my opinion, we will need more dams. But this is one of the smallest river systems in the state. It's already got three dams on it of note, maybe four, with the two at the Newcrest mine at Cadia. Why it needs another dam to give it five dams, I, I, I just don't think it can sustain it. I really don't. This is a special place for Anthony and his wife, Roz. Their parents' and grandparents' ashes are scattered here. But it's the caves that run underneath the land that Anthony Dunhill is most concerned about. I think the caves are the biggest issue because once they start filling the caves up with water, who knows where it goes? I mean, there's could go anywhere. All this limestone belt runs through here from Abercrombie through here through to Wellington. And there's a big, and, and the whole fault system could be limitless. So once it starts flooding the caves, the fact that it will destroy the caves as they are, the water just may go as well. And so the whole thing becomes pointless. But John Cobb says he's not worried about the potential impact on the caves. No, I'm, I'm not. And, and one of the things that's being done, there's a, uh, a scoping study being done, which by the end of the year uh, will have reported to the New South Wales government. Uh, and if that's successful, then they will set aside quite a few million to the in-depth study that has to be done uh, to determine what kind of wall, uh, et cetera, is needed uh, on that site uh, to, to put the dam up. And they may recommend a slightly different site. Th that's yet to be seen. But, uh, well, dams are created... Dam uh, sorry, uh, caves in limestone are created by water, so I don't see why water would hurt them. In the end, we'll spend a few million dollars and come to the same position we were in 1960, which is this is an unsafe place for a dam. It will destroy this important farmland, destroy these uh, incredibly important uh, caves and this geology here, and will be rejected. So the Greens believe we should cut to the chase and knock this proposal on the head before we waste millions of dollars with a, a silly feasibility study. Oh, look at the columns. Yes. 
All stalactites. The stalactites. Inside the old Shearer's quarters on Anthony Dunhill's property, there's much excitement at what just an hour's worth of 3D mapping has produced. That's looking at it sort of side on almost. Side on, yeah. I think that they're very important in that they've never been developed like Janolan has been, so they're in a much more pristine state. Uh, the local landowners have always looked after them exceptionally well and the decorations in the caves, I think, rival anything at Janolan. And Janolan, of course, is world renowned for the quality of its decorations. So um, you, you combine the quality of the decorations and some of the unique um, fossil and uh, geological aspects of these caves. And the National Trust have recently classified them. So I think people are starting to realise that we do have a really valuable resource here. Preserving the caves means keeping them safe from intruders. Those who oppose the dam hope the state government will not be one of them. Sharon O'Neill reporting. And still on.